welcome to today's video today oh, it was a rush we got Sophie and we got Ellie here Ellie oh my gosh that dog Ellie's going to her vet appointment I already told you guys and we I was so excited this morning to get up get her ready she's like I am not a, that kind of a dog don't get me ready just stick me in the car and I'll go with you but don't get me ready so I had to so I had to get Sophie's help to get her ready she looks like that Oh my gosh. <laughs> I like it took so long. I took I was so careful with her hair today to make it beautiful. And I put her down and she's like, get this off of me right now. And then she just rolled and messed up her whole head. And it was a, it was a journey. It's been a journey. It's been a journey to get my little puppy out the door to get her last set of puppy shots. Regardless, we are on our way to the vet. I'm super excited. I don't care if she looks a little ratchet. <laughs> when I was younger and I had kids, I was that mom that like, I wouldn't let them leave the house unless their hair was perfect. My boys, I should try and find a picture, had like the most beautiful hair and we did it every single day and made it like all beautiful and perfect. And, and literally all my kids had different clothes to wear every single day. And I like spent so much time matching things so that they rarely ever wore the same outfit. And that's such a weird flex to me now because that is not who, the, who I am. Like. When I was young, I was such a different person. Now, I don't find value in any of that kind of stuff, except for I still like my, my puppy to look pretty. We were made for each other. It's gonna be an expensive day, you guys. Vet number one under wraps, and it was like double and a half what our other puppies cost to get their shots. He said Yorkies are really like fancy. <laughs> like he was good. So I got her microchip. Got this little tiny tag that comes with it. Uh, I'm not gonna put it on her until she's like bigger and has like a proper tag. It's just a top tag to say that she was microchip. I got her microchip because she is a runner. Not that I think that she would ever run away. Okay, I totally think she would run away. But and then I got got the um, flea and tick medicine for this year for this season. And then I got some drugs because remember I told you guys ever since I got her she smelled as soon as I took her into the car with me I could tell she smelled she had like a funny smell in her ear I was thinking like maybe she has an uh, ear infection but I've been watching her for signs of an ear infection she doesn't have signs of an ear infection she doesn't even hardly scratch she will scratch when she first wakes up in the morning that's the only time she really does a that's the only time she really scratches so I had him check it just to make sure and I told him like there's an odor and you know how he smell how they smell dogs ears they stick the thing inside and look inside their ears and then they put the thing to their nose instead of smelling your ears which is smart if you don't want to get bit <laughs> uh, anyway he said it's a yeast infection so she has a yeast infection in her ears so I'm gonna treat for that but also he said that yeast infections can oftentimes be like an allergy to food or treats. So somebody in our comments said that we should give her puppy treats and I'm like oh, I have never seen puppy treats. Like we never can find puppy treats because I don't think typically you're supposed to give puppy treats. Puppies treats. But anyways he said he's never seen puppy treats either. He just uses regular treats. He uses like the small breed kind and that's what we use. And he said it's good to use treats to, for training and stuff and he said just use one kind of treat because you want to be able to rule out allergies. He said yeast lots of times comes from an allergy, which I agree, especially on the skin. In the ear, I think she got like water in there or something. I talked to him about how she is like a food freak, a food freak, that he, she's crazy about food. Um, he said she's a perfect weight, 4.2 pounds, perfect weight, he said. She definitely doesn't look like she's starving. She feels good, she looks good. Um, he said to definitely don't let her gorge on the other animals' food, on our other dog's food, which is what she does. She like will get up there and eat so much that she's sick until the next morning. So she'll get up on and she'll get into our other dog's food. We put it up high so she can't get it. She jumps up there so we put it up higher. She still can find a way to get it. Like super annoying. We're working on that. But twice now she's gorged herself to the point where she's been so sick after. So. He said it's like a breed thing and it's sometimes just a puppy thing and that we have to just keep watching her and just don't let her do it. Uh, he didn't feel like she had any issues though. No one else. Uh, she was a princess there. 
normally she likes to be independent and strong, but there she had to be laying on top of me. She had to, I put her on the table and I surrounded my body over top of her so she knew I was there. She had to have her paws touching me, her face touching me, every part of her body had to be touching a part of mine. She got microchips, she did phenomenal. She did really, really well. She didn't like, she's not the kind of dog to like growl and bark and bite or be mean or aggressive in any way, shape or form. So she did really good, she was terrified. <laughs> We got all the stuff to make Miss Ellie perfect and taking taken care of. All right, so we are like about 10 minutes away from vet. And I said, Sam, did you clean the barn beautifully? Is it that clean? And he's like, yes, yes it is, Laura. So I was like, oh, all right, I won't rush down. Oh, I'm out of breath because I've rushed down. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm looking around the barn. Holy moly, it's not even close to that clean. Stuff everywhere. <laughs> so now I'm rushing. So one of the things that happens though when you have a barn, like if you let other people do your work for you, especially when you like it a certain way, then you suffer. <laughs> you have to do it yourself or don't complain. That's what I believe. Look, I'm gonna show you guys. Somebody said, huh. I wonder where all the dirt is that they're blowing. Maybe it's there. Buckets, brooms. Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi, girls. It's really cold, you guys. To hold on to, I was caught out of bed. Beneath your moon, I was birthed in the mountains. Under so remember I told you guys that Chino, we believe Chino has too much iron in his system and when you have too much iron in your system then it can cause two other vitamins to be low and those vitamins are the ones that affect your feet and affect your your hair so i told you recently that he has a little bit of concavity in his he's, feet what's concavity he has like you know how there's a space on either side of the frog mm -hmm. chinos used to be flat all the way across so it used to put pressure but now they're Does growing he, normally he like it when you poke them can move them over so I think we are definitely on the right track there. I got that information from an equine nutritionist. He's just a princess. Yeah, and he's doing better. So his feet are doing better. So then today, I was like, wow, look at his tail. So his tail looks good again, except at the very bottom. And I think the very bottom is like, it got thinner while his vitamins and his minerals weren't weren't right but look at his tail it looks really a lot thicker other than the fact that he's got it i should brush he's, it yeah he's got it pulled to his body pulled tight to his body he's like don't look at my butt anyway he's getting ready for um, the vet yeah gabby gabby does it yeah you start at the very bottom and you yeah they should make blankets for their legs this is it do you guys want to come to the day by day grooming school do you guys want to come to the hairdressing place sophia will do your hair what? <laughs> when she was little, she used to do our hair all the time. We thought she was going to grow up and be a hairdresser. Oh, yeah. No. And it used I, to I, hurt I, so I, bad. I put dad's hair in ponytails. Yeah, like a hundred ponytails. And then someone came to the door. Yeah. You. And Gabby never did that stuff. That was not what she was into. Gabby was into so, dolls. Yeah. Um... <laughs> put salt and Windex Yeah, and, and she used to pretend to be a nurse, and she used to clean my cuts. And she used yeah, to use, you're making his tail but one it's time Gabby sprayed and I watched my kids like crazy. Oh, I sprayed wood cleaner in Sophie's hair. She cleaned it broke the elastic. wood cleaner in Sophie's hair and it went right on to her ponytails and broke the elastics. Yeah. That was annoying. I don't even know why. The only time they ever did got into trouble were the days that like they had to go to preschool or they were getting ready to go someplace and I was getting ready and they had time like to be doing stuff without me there. Samantha, you're pulling out all his hair. Stop. No, I'm not. Look at the brush. Let's see the brush. It's only Oops. a little bit. Yeah, he needed that, Gabby. But I definitely notice a difference. No, I've, I've been- Do you on... notice a difference? 
I went to Wonderland, right? Mm -hmm. Canada's kind of Wonderland. Yeah. I've been on the log ride with Jazzy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> I kind of remember it. I'm upset that I don't remember it. I know. I remember that we went on it multiple Have I times, there right? Before? Yeah, we've all been to Canada's Wonderland. Can we go again? Yeah, we're going to go this year for sure. Okay, somebody needs to trim him up. So we just got back from the barn, and I'm going to tell you guys this stuff in the house because uh, we froze. We we had, like, how long of a visit was it with the uh, farrier, or with the vet, Sam? At least over an hour. Oh, it was a long time. It felt like three hours. But anyway, we had a really thorough visit and basically i told him uh, he already knows everything about chino he knows everything about his feet he knows about his history he knows everything like we have our vet here like often enough that we know him well <laughs> and he knows us well i explained how we took his shoes off because he wasn't able to keep them on and ollie's up here <laughs> oh before i tell you about what happened did i already tell you the whole yeah i told you everything about the about the vet for her she's she's doing perfect she's good is good still trying to steal food though okay so um so he knows everything about our horse and so i told him like it's almost time to take him back to the barn for show season and to get back into working condition and i don't want to take him until i know for sure that he's going to be successful and that he's going to be okay and i want like you to do a really thorough evaluation and just like do everything with him and so i explained about his feet and he tested his feet and he said his feet are still sore so his feet were still sore. Yeah, we took off his shoes, I think November, and his feet were still sore. We did a lot of stuff. We did a ton of stuff. He evaluated him from his head down to his little tiny toes. And we came to a plan. He basically said like, if you wanna ride him, we have to put um, new shoes on him and we have to like, fix a few things like change a few things with his feet if you want to ride him for show season this year if you were planning to take him back to the barn he's going to have to get shoes on again and he's going to ha and we're going to have to change like his ankles and stuff so we did x-rays we did everything you guys um so we talked about it a lot and we talked about how like the most the longest period of time that chino has been really good was when we first got him and he didn't have any shoes on and that was the best and we talked about how like he is so hard on his shoes like he pulls them off and like sometimes within an hour he pulls shoes off and he said that even though he believes in shoes he also believes that sometimes horses need a break from shoes and so i'm not going to tell you all the stuff that we talked about even though i love him i love our vet so much like he speaks in a way that i understand and he's he's so incredibly kind and he i feel like his values are similar similar to mine like he said, you know, if you want to get him back riding, this is what you have to do. And I said, like Gabby and I said, like, we don't want to get him back riding as fast as possible. We want to heal him from the inside out. Like, we want to heal him and get him, oh, it makes me want to cry. Like, I, we don't care if he rides at all this summer. We don't care if he's a pasture pet for a few more months. Like, we want to fix his feet. So this is the plan. Are you ready? So this is the plan. So the plan is... We are gonna, so he knows our farrier. He he really is, he's close with our farrier. And he, we took x-rays, you know, like to get his, uh, ang to figure out the angles he needs to be at and to get the sole depth. And so he's going to message our farrier and talk to her about him and tell him exact, tell her exactly what he needs. He wants her to take a couple of months to get his feet exactly where they need to be, like with the angles and stuff. And then we're gonna let him sit for a little bit. So she's going to correctively trim him. Uh, after a couple of months, we're going to walk him around a few places and see if his feet get sore. And if his feet don't get sore, then she's gonna try and ride him. And then if, if he's good, he's good. If he's not good after all that, after all the corrective trimming, because he needs specific trimming, then he is going to get shoes. So that's what we're going to do. We want to try and preserve him being barefoot if we can, because shoes cause other problems for him. Shoes don't like fix the problem for Chino. And that's one thing that was a hard lesson for us is that shoes never have ever fixed the problem with him. It's just that his feet aren't going to hold up the way they are. That's what he said. And that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know like if we take him back and we start riding him, are his feet going to get more sore? And he said, yeah, like his feet aren't, aren't ready yet. They're not like his feet haven't changed enough to prevent him from being sore. So 
good news and bad news. Sad that Gabby won't get to show him this summer. I mean, I don't think she'll get to show him. She might get to ride him this summer. <laughs> but he's worth it. To us, he's worth the wait. And that's all that we want from him is to, to feel good all the time. Instead of, like, having issues sometimes. But before we went down there, Sam's like, it can't be his feet that are always the problem. So I told our vet that. And our vet said the feet are always the problem. 95% of the time, the feet are the problem. And yeah, he just has crappy feet. And But this time, we're going to try and figure it out in a better way that will last. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys that um, Chino was not, like, in love with that whole thing, with that evaluation. Like, he, um, he blocked his hook. Like, he blocked his feet to see... Like, he blocked one of his feet to see um, him moving after. And he hated that. He absolutely hated that. So, yeah, is it called a twitch? Torch? Yeah. No, what's Twitch. it called? Twitch. So, um, he didn't like, he didn't love it. He was really good, but he didn't love the whole, the whole exam. And he was unhappy with our vet. Um, but at the end, like I almost teared up, like at the end when our vet was telling us, like when we were really having this big, long conversation about what was best for Chino, um, Chino looked over at him, put his face so close to him and was like snuggling into his cheek. Like I see this all the time, how horses literally show how they feel like with their body language. Like you could tell that he was trying to say thank you to the vet for like trying to make him better and trying to like help him. Like I know not everybody believes in that, but it was so shocking how he went from like hating the vet to saying like, thank you so much to him. Like, I don't know, it's just amazing. And it was so beautiful. And I always want to remember that. Don't you know that you're beautiful?